Toongrin.com. Good, we're done. Now I can go back home and be three-dimensional again. <laughs> Not yet. You also have my sequel. Oh, God, your voice. It's like broken glass. Oh, please stop talking. Now enjoy my flick. Scary Godmother 2's The Revenge of Jimmy. Oh, God, help us. And we're back with some more Scary Godmother, this time with even half the budget to show even less models around. Isn't that usually the case for, like, sequels? Yep, especially these, like, direct-to-DVD sequels, or direct-to-TV special, whatever this is. Actually, yeah, you know what, that's what probably makes it worse off in the grand scheme of things, that not only is it not a movie, it's a direct-to-TV special, so the budget's already been cut immensely, even more so because it's not even a direct movie to TV, it's a direct special to TV, so that's like, three-fourths of the budget has been cut from the project. And it just makes everything worse, in a way. Like, for, first off, there's very few models, except for, like, any of, only the main character models are there. Like, all those background characters that we saw in the first movie, they're gone. Which is weird, like, did they just throw the models out? I mean, like, there, there's really no reason unless it would have cost to animate them, so they just cut them out entirely. But for this movie, that just sort of, like, puts an arm behind their backs, and just with the narrative. Because the narrative of this one is that it's Jimmy's revenge on Halloween. It basically, in the last flick, the monsters traumatized Jimmy, and now Jimmy's become this neurotic, <laughs> potentially <laughs> homicidal shut-in. Yeah, he's just insane, and his parents don't really give a shit. <laughs> yeah, it, his, his parents never, like, really address, like, how mentally unstable their f***ing kids become, and the whole movie kind of just overlooks the fact that he's got, like, PTSD. Scary Godmother 2, Revenge of Jimmy, is it bad, per se, but... It's not well thought out. It's not well thought out, and honestly, and I think White Boy will agree with me on this, you can't even say it's like a cash grab like other sequels, because it sure doesn't look like it. No, there's definitely even less money than a cash grab would like allow to like, put into it. And just who would put the money into this? Like, Even though like we both liked Scary Godmother, we can definitely say it's not the Halloween classic that we would post on billboards and all that. It's like, everyone must see this, and everyone will see it. It's basically just a movie like, oh, that, that's a very cute movie. Definitely needs a sequel! It just makes it so, sort of sad because all the characters are back and they're basically all the same sort of thing. Scary Godmother is still n nice and wacky. Like, Anna Marie is still the sweet, innocent little girl, but now she's the one that's saving Halloween from Jimmy. Because Jimmy's whole thing throughout this is he, he's gonna destroy Halloween. Can, can we address, in my opinion, what's like the worst part of this movie? What is the worst part of this movie? In my opinion, the worst part is that in the narrative, the idea is that Halloween is fueled by the celebration of the holiday, which is it's not a bad concept. I've seen it done before in other stuff where like a holiday is, you know, determined by belief. I believe they actually did that in that really shitty DreamWorks movie, Rise of the Guardians. Yeah, but the way they play it in here is like, they're like, oh, when nobody believes in Halloween, I guess the scary godmother, by the way, must be the representation of Halloween or something, because, like, her house disappears. Basically, her, the universe in which she lives, because she basically lives in another dimension, becomes a black void of nothingness. Because we just stopped believing in Halloween. Maybe we No, 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 we didn't stop believing in Halloween. Four f***ing kids stopped believing in Halloween, and somehow that affects the entire holiday on a global scale. Yeah, all of Jimmy's, like, tactics to destroy Halloween, destroy pumpkins in one pumpkin patch. Yeah, like, Jimmy's genius, alright? Because this, this is this actually affects the whole, like, Halloween plot, is that Jimmy hates Halloween, and his friends want to go and celebrate it, and he's angry that they want to go and have a good time. So Jimmy's still an asshole. So, the mentality that Jimmy goes into is, I'm gonna destroy Halloween! <laughs> so he goes out, one pumpkin patch, he kicks in the pumpkins, and he's like, yeah, that did it, and he breaks his foot. So, it doesn't. Next plan, 
goes into a store, breaks into a store, I guess, after hours. And he actually puts, goes into multiple stores, in fact. <laughs> and right? they said that. And he, put, and he uses marker to basically put a flammable on all the costumes and poison on all the candy. It's completely brushed under the rug, like, the freaking four kids, like, come in. All the candy says poison, and all the costumes say they're flammable. Everyone just, like, shrugs. Halloween is ruined! <laughs> ruined over! Ugh. Look, we know it's a kid's animated special. We're not idiots. <laughs> yeah. But couldn't someone give more of a f***? Yeah, you show the scale of the world, world, because we're saying, like, this ho whole season of Halloween would be totally destroyed, but it's only being, like, seen through the eyes of four kids. We're not seeing, like, the global scale that we need to see to basically say, as soon as Jimmy does this, Halloween is just over. It's ruined. Everywhere. And, and even then, what I don't get is, the Scary Godmother is specifically Hannah's Scary Godmother. But Hannah's, like, faith in the holiday never wavers. She's always positive about the holiday. So really, Scary Godmother should be fine. You know what it is, boy? You know what it is? The first film was just a delightful, fun romp of, you know, some kids are jerks. The Halloween season can be fun. It can be scary at times. It can still be delightful. It has delicious food, engaging moments, and times you spend with your friends. It was like a, a sort of a feel-good. You get to Revenge of Jimmy, all of a sudden some asshole walked in the room. Look, man, there are rules to the holiday you need to understand for this to work. And all of a sudden it's like, wait, what? Now we're building a mythos? Yeah, we're just building all these rules into the sequel movie. No one is going to get this. It's just a bunch of bullshit. Is Revenge of Jimmy bad? It's not bad, but it really isn't good. It's just... It exists and it's just not a well thought out movie. There's not, not a lot of thought to put into this. They just basically thought of the idea as like, what if Jimmy became crazy and tried to destroy Halloween? But by, by destroy Halloween, they mean mildly inconvenience a small group of kids. Yeah, exactly. But it's it's like destroying Halloween, you know, if it was narrowed down to like four kids. Yeah, yeah and it seemed like the end of the world to those four kids. It, it, it's it's not bad. The animation, it didn't go up, though. It didn't go down, really, either. I mean, it did, you know what? It kind of did go down, because, like, you get to the realm where the scary godmother's house is in her dimension, and it's just her house and nothing else. Yeah, the animation seemed to be a bit more blander this time. <laughs> like, the textures, like, that had the black blotches in the last movie sort of were missing in this and just made everything sort of seem flat. The thing is, when you get down to it, let's say, hy hypothetical statement, Scary Godmother was attempting to bridge from book series to animated film series. This was the one that killed it. This derailed the train, it ruined the trip, it wrecked the ride. And we'll just never see anything Scary Godmother again just because of this. Because just even if you just see it, you don't think it's bad, you just don't think it's anything like worth worth investing in. <laughs> However, I do want to make it clear that I still watch The Revenge of Jimmy actually every year. It's not for any sort of like guilty pleasure sort of reasons. I just find enjoyment in how totally bad it is. I just enjoy making fun of this movie so much. Just watching Jimmy going all crazy is what I just find hilarious in it, and how just over the top it is. Does that make it good? No. It really, really doesn't. Because I'm more just watching the movie fail really hard. Scary Godmother, the first one, is definitely the better movie. Yeah, we like the first one and do recommend like at least checking out the first one. You can skip this one. Yeah, you can skip it. I would say, it's like, at best, a harmless watch, but at worst, no. Just don't go and see it. Well, like, if it didn't exist, you, you could, you'd still go on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, that's it. So, uh, The Revenge of Jimmy, flop. Just a big flop. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Now we're sad. Have a happy Halloween, I guess. And don't try to destroy it. I also accept gift certificates, gift baskets, comic books, DVDs, CDs, later! Those little squishy candies with the cream inside! Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Thanks for watching! <laughs>